All right, 7RP3, this is 7th grade ratios and proportions, standard 3. Uh, we are looking to use proportional relationships to solve um, percent problems. And we are in video 2, working our way towards um, the main topics of simple interest, tax, uh, markups and markdowns, etc. You can read that in the uh, standard there. And um, before we get into all those different types of percent ideas, I wanted to review a bunch of methods that you can use um, when you are going to be solving those types of problems. So we're going to be talking about percents and decimals and proportions. A few terms to know. Please copy those down in your journals and define them. All right, just a reminder. Uh, we talked about this in class and we talked about this in a previous video. Very important. The word percent means per hundred, so per 100. It's a ratio whose denominator is 100. So we are going to read the directions. It says write the percentage as a decimal. Now, uh, we've talked about what it looks like as a fraction. So if I were to quickly do that, as a fraction, we know that we have 48 per 100. And we used to uh, reduce this all the way down, find out uh, a common number that goes into both, and, and put it into simplest form. But today, we are going to be writing it as a decimal instead. So what you need to understand is that 48 is a whole number. And you can always add a decimal and a zero, and that doesn't change its value. So it is 48 and 0%, zero percent, zero tenths percent. And when we are taking a percentage and turning it into a decimal, we have to divide by 100. And every time you divide by 100, you are relocating your decimal two places to the left. So this decimal right here, if you were to move it um, one time, you've just divided by 10. And if you were to move it two times, you have divided it by 100. So in this case, taking the percent sign off by relocating that decimal twice to the left, you now have it in decimal form. So you drop the percent sign and relocate that decimal, taking it from your whole number into a um, decimal two times to the left. Now, vice versa, if you were given a decimal and they say take the decimal and turn it into a percentage, you would work that in reverse. So when you move it back twice to the right, you are actually multiplying by 100 and you'd get right back to where you began. So two times to the right would get you back to 48%. All right, next example. They give you a three-digit percentage. So we have 105% turning it into a decimal because right now it's a whole number. Turning it into a decimal, same idea. Dividing by 100 means you are moving it twice to the left. So we're going to end up at 1 and 5 hundredths. Drop the percent sign because we are now turning it into a decimal. And if we wanted to write it as a mixed number, it would be 1 and five hundredths or one and one twentieth. Why did I do that? Because I simplified my fraction. Five goes into five once and five goes into 120 times. But reading the directions, they want this written as a decimal, which is right here, and which was right here. This was 0 and 48 hundredths. OK, last one. Now I have a one-digit percentage. And it reads as 
we need to drop this percent sign, divide by 100, which means we're going to move it twice to the left. A common error is they just stop at one time, but you need to carry on to a second time, which means we need to add a zero to get that um, decimal over twice. So if the decimal was after the 2, 1 to the left is dividing by 10, 2 to the left is dividing by 100. So that reads 2 one hundredths. And if you think about it, tenth place, hundredth place, two one hundredths reads as what we've been working with. Anything per hundred is equal to itself as the percentage. So this reads as two percent and two percent. All right, next part says write this fraction as a percentage. Now, uh, there are a couple of different ways that you can do this, and we've talked about both of them. We always know that we can take a fraction, turn it into a decimal, and then take that decimal and turn it into a percentage, just like on the last screen. Um, let's start with that one. We can use long division. So we go the numerator divided by the denominator. 20 goes into 7 0 times, 0 times 20 is 0, subtract, I have 7. 20 cannot go into 7, so I can add a decimal, bring it up, add a 0, bring it down. 20 goes into 70, 3 times, 3 times 20 is 60, we end up with 10. 20 cannot go into 10, add a 0, bring it down and 20 goes into 100 five times. Five times 20 is 100, and we end up with um, a decimal of 0 0.35 or 35 hundredths. So if we know that this is read as 35 one hundredths, because we have the tenth place and the hundredths place, we can write it as a percentage of, well, 35 one hundredths is known as 35%. If you didn't want to use the fraction idea, we remember from the last screen that if you take a decimal and now multiply by 100 or move it two times to the right, you're going to end up with your 35%. So this would go 1, 2, 35, drop the decimal add the percentage. All right. Um, the second way that you can do it, and um, I think we have talked about this. The second way you can do it is notice that this denominator is um, able to go into 100 evenly. So if I use a proportion, I know that my answer needs to be a percentage, so whatever number arrives up here in the numerator, that will be my answer for the percentage. And since 100 is divisible by 5, let's quickly do a uh, multiplication. So 5 multiplied by what is 100? Or in other words, 100 divided by 5 is good, 20. So 5 multiplied by 20 is 100, so 3 multiplied by 20 is 60. So we get 60%. Now, that will only work if this denominator can evenly go into 100 without any remainders. Now, we could have done that over here with the 20 because the 20 goes into 100 evenly. Um, but I wanted to show you both ways. If you're not comfortable with this idea and you're uh, confused as to whether or not this denominator will go into 100, you can, in fact, do what we did on the first problem and say, all right, 3 divided by 5, and go ahead, do your long division, and then move your decimal in the end uh, for your answer. All right, now we have a couple different types of percent problems. They use words now. And a common method of solving is this is over of, is divided by of, is equal to this percentage answer. 
some teachers like to say is over of is equal to percent over 100 but we all know that percent is that idea that we're going to get a value and it's going to be per 100. So the hardest part about this, the most difficult part, is figuring out who the is and the of are. Now in this case, I don't see it too difficult. I don't think it's that um, hard to find who the is is because it has it right here. What percent of 150 is 90? So the is is 90. So let's take that is and put it in the numerator. And then the of, well, it says of 150. And that is equal to the missing percent. So we know that this is per 100. And I don't know what it is because it says what percent. And if it's missing, I call it x. Now we use our cross product rule. And that is when we multiply across. Now, uh, we can uh, cross cancel to make our lives a little easier first. So I know that 90 and 100 can be reduced. What goes into both uh, 90 and 100? Well, 10. 10 goes in here 9 times. 10 goes in here 10 times. All right, so now I have 9 over 150 equaling x over 10. So if we are doing our cross product rule, I'm going to take x multiplied by 150 to get 150x equaling 9 multiplied by 10 to get 90. And ultimately what we're doing here is we are taking this number that's attached to the x because we don't know what that is this is a multiplication sign so we do the opposite to both sides and we are going to divide both sides by 150 and let's see here we're going to have x equaling whatever this decimal answer is. Now, how are you going to do that? Well, um, if we if we can cancel easily here, we can simplify 90 and 150. I know that my zeros can cancel, and I'm left with 9 over 15. Reduce this down, I get 3 goes into 9 3 times, 3 goes into 15 5 times. And now, how am I going to get a percentage out of this? Well, revert back to the other screens. You could do it either way. I know that 5 can go into 100. I could set up a proportion. Or I can take that 3 fifths, get a decimal, 3 divided by 5. 5 goes into 3, 0. Let me quickly do this for you. Add a decimal, bring it up. Add a 0, bring it down. So 5 goes into 30 6 times. Well, that's a decimal. I don't want a decimal. It says I want a percentage. So that means I need to multiply this by 100, or in other words, move it two times to the right. Well, one time to the right, two times to the right, add a percent sign. So we're going to end up with 60%. All right, again, we have a new statement. It says 117 is 45% of what number? Well, let's figure out our fraction here. It's the toughest part. 117 is. All right, so this is, there's my is, 45% of what number? Well, here's your of. Of what number is your x? And that is going to be equal to 45 per 100, or 45 percent. All right, same method. Um, we are going to do our cross product rule. So I'll set up the algebra for you. 45 times x is equal to 
117 multiplied by 100. And then 45x is equal to 117 times 100. Well, 117 times 1 is 117 with two zeros on the end. And now you are going to do your division. Divide both sides by 45. And if you don't have access to a calculator, you'll have to do this by hand. So these cancel x is equal to, you come off here on the side, you divide by 45, and you are going to get a number answer. All right, because it says, what number? My answer will be in number form, not percentage form. So just to save time, I am going to grab my calculator, if I could find it. And I'm going to say 11,700 divided by 45 is equal to 260. Notice it's not a percentage again, because the answer needs to be a number. All right, the third and final type says, what number is 35% of 100? So if I'm setting up my fraction, what number is? So there it is, what number is? So I don't know what it is, so I'll call it x. My of 300, here's my of, so my of goes in the denominator, and we know that that is going to be proportional to 35%, so 35 per 100, and now we do our cross product once again. You know, you can cross cancel these numbers, 5 goes into both of them for sure. Um, Let's skip that for now. I mean, you can do that on your own if you want to, just for the sake of time. We have 100 times x is 100x, and that's going to be equal to 35 times 300. So 100x is equal to Let's go over here if you want. 300 times 35. And we have 10,500. And if we're dividing 10,500 by 100, that means we are moving that decimal at the end two times to the right. So we're going to end up with x equaling two times, I'm sorry, not to the right, two times to the left, one, two, we'll end up with 105. And again, it's asking what number? So it's not going to be a percent answer, it's going to be a number answer. Okay, in your journal, I'd like you to define the given terms on page two of the flip chart and write down any sentences, uh, what you learned from this video. And if you have any questions, uh, don't, be, uh, don't be shy to ask those in class and we'll solve those together.